Hello and welcome back. Sean here. Mountain's Garage. Let me rephrase that. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Eve 2023 and I hope the next couple days bring memories to you that you remember later in life. I am fortunate that I have many, many fond memories of Christmas and other holidays. I hit the lottery when I was young. Not financially, family-wise. My family is awesome, every one of them, including the extended family. As your family grows, as you get older, there's not a dud among them. They're all awesome people. Just lucky. And uh, enough bragging. Tonight at dark, I was reminded <laughs> of who I am. I got to do a little, uh, lay a little groundwork here. There was a blizzard in the late 60s. I could look up the year, 67, 68, uh, on the, in the Northeast. And I remember it being Christmas Eve. I was watching Gomer Pyle. I remember that. I don't know if it was a rerun or first aired. All I know is I was allowed to stay up a little bit later. It was snowing like, <laughs> snowing a lot. And the turn of events that happened was the snowblower that my dad was trying to use was broken. And my mother was quite sure the cure was in the bags of Christmas presents yet to be wrapped. She would have done it after we went to bed. So when you wake up in the morning, you know, the living room stuffed under the tree with presents. She had five kids, and by then probably a couple extended family members, you know, girlfriends and boyfriends and whatnot, so. Everything was in trash bags, hidden away in the what closet space she had. So she started digging. And what happened next was we had our Christmas, Christmas Eve, which turned into tradition. We did that from that year on. It actually worked out, again, as your family grows, most people have two Christmases, one with their real family and one with their extended family. This way, she called Christmas Eve on that blizzardy night in the late 60s, and we had Christmas at my parents' house on Christmas Eve. I don't know if the snowblower got fixed. It must have. <laughs> but either way, it started two traditions, actually. One, my mother pretty much stopped wrapping gifts because nobody cared. And uh, Christmas was on Christmas Eve. And the greatest thing, slight sidebar, if you want to remove stress from Christmas, we did this when I was in my teens, my teen years, early teen years, we decided that Christmas was for kids, and the rest of us could have a Yankee swap or something like that, but we weren't going to exchange gifts among the adults. And boy, that really wakes up your holiday. Stress is gone. You got a couple simple gifts maybe to buy for whoever, but wow, if you want to enjoy the holidays, take the whole gift-giving thing out of it, if, unless you're giving to kids. But that's my experience. So, it's Christmas Eve. I'm 15 years old. I just worked my first 10 months at a job, a transmission shop. And like all kids that age, I was really anxious to do anything mechanical. And what I really wanted was an engine of my very own, just any engine to take apart. And, you know, I'm sure I dreamed of building some really powerful engine, you know, you're 15 and you don't have any money, you're making a tiny bit of money. I worked for minimum wage, my first job. So that afternoon, I remember it well, it was cold. It was supposed to be a big stone storm coming. Seems to me it was during the week. Obviously we were working, so it wasn't a Saturday or a Sunday because it was five o'clock. There's no way we were getting out of work early. <laughs> 
So at the stroke of five o'clock, I'd probably asked a few questions about this greasy, nasty looking two bolt main 350 Chevy small block that was recently delivered in the pile of junk with a bunch of core transmissions and stuff out in back of the shop. I probably asked the boss three or four times about it. Didn't ask for it, but at five o'clock, I'm washing my hands and he told me I could have it. But I had to get it out of there that night because it was gonna snow and he needed to plow and whatnot, whatever the reasons were. And obviously it hadn't been wet yet, so he was giving me some good advice that I needed to get it under cover if I was really interested in it. Now, again, it's Christmas Eve and gearing up a mile away at my parents' house is Christmas Eve meal and, you know, a get together. So I was buddies with a guy that drove the wrecker for the mobile station just around the corner. I told my ride home <laughs> to go ahead. I could get him to come over, hook onto that engine, bring it to my house. No problem. I'm wearing thin pants like this, uh, those thin work jackets. It's cold and it's starting to snow. I go over there and he's out on a call. <laughs> and the normal guy that would have been helpful and probably called him on the radio wasn't there. I pretty much was getting nowhere. He probably saw the look on my face, so he... Of course, this is way before cell phones or any way to go. You had the two-way radio, and that was it. So I started walking back over, and here he comes. It was a one-way, four lanes, one direction coming off the bridge. I'm right next to the ocean, trying to picture the scene. I am literally looking at the water, freezing outside, walking back to the shop where nobody's there. Again, it's only a mile from my parents' house. I could have walked home. I walked it many times, but I wanted to get that engine home. And here he comes with the wrecker. I wave, flag him down, and he was able to, whatever, make an excuse. We went back around the block, out back, and we hook onto the engine. Now it's swinging on the, you know, traditional wrecker with a boom and a hook and the motors loosely attached to that, tied to the back of the truck, and we're headed for my parents' house. Now it's Christmas Eve. There's lots of people coming my parents have a long driveway. You can park two cars wide. It's 100 feet long. The garage is at the end, and I need to get the engine in there. So I had to disturb everybody because I've been wrestling with it, and I'm dirty. And uh, <laughs> we did get it in. I had no way to unload it. We just set it down with the wrecker, I'm sure. Probably had to put my parents' car outside. They were very, very, always very patient. So... I wasn't too late, didn't cause too much of a disturbance, and I got it home. And again, the presents that year, I don't remember. If there was any, there probably wasn't any. I don't know. I'm sure there was something, underwear probably, but I was focused the next morning, my Christmas morning. I couldn't wait to get out and tear that greasy thing apart. And it was probably, still to this day, one of the nastiest engines I've ever taken apart. I got a rival to it I picked up the morning before, well, two mornings ago, which is funny because it seems this time of year, pick a cold day, I'm going to drag an engine home, apparently. I'm no longer 15, but somehow in my peanut-sized brain, greasy old junk still excites me. This is a 5.3, nothing really to write home about. Could even be a 4.8, I don't know. I haven't even peeked in the spark plug hole to determine. Interesting is the greasy orange... Six liter, I'm looking at the camshaft and stuff in it and the valve springs that are in the rectangular port heads. The valve springs are definitely not stock. The fact that it has rectangular port heads, somebody's painted it orange, which believe it or not, while it's not necessarily pretty, it's better than dealing with all the rust. Cause these things rust and there's lots of nooks and crannies. The LS block is really hard to clean. However, that one, somebody loved it at some point, but if you take the lift plate off, it is gooey at best. It reminded me when I saw it of that Christmas Eve when I was 15. So, that's a quick, somewhat boring story, but it seemed fitting. What I really wanted to do is wish you 
a Merry Christmas. I hope your, again, your memories are fond. It makes me sad inside that I know a lot of people, holidays are stressful. I hope this one's not. So, Merry Christmas, and I'll talk to you in just a few days.